Hello, Sterling Grace Community Church, and also hello to all those who are watching uh, uh, in the, throughout the United States and in Europe. We're so glad to have you this morning, and we have been going over uh, this topic that we're calling Dynamics of Faith Revealed, or perhaps we should call it Dynamics of a Living Faith Revealed. And today we're going to talk about the fact that uh, good things start happening when we live in a life of faith. You know, it is sometimes difficult to explain to a non-believer that being a believer improves the quality of a person's life so much. You know, and while we know that all people, including believers, face life issues and difficulties just like anyone else, there is also a dimension of confidence, trust in God for a good ultimate outcome, a good ultimate solution. And the believer through this has a peace that a non-believer does not have. After all, God is with the believer. I've noticed as I've gone through life, perhaps you have too, <clears throat> that you meet people who expect the worst in life, and they don't expect the best in life. And when the worst is expected, they will probably receive it. Show me a cynic and I will show you a non-believer, generally speaking, or at least I will show you a person who is not mature in their faith. Of course, it is good to be aware of the worst that can happen, that way the avoidance of the worst outcome can be planned. But I am talking about a person who does not have the positive attitude or the confidence in God to do the best for them. They are negative with a defeatist attitude. And that negative attitude is not of God. Today our primary verse is one that is well known. We're going to consider Romans chapter 8 verse 28. It says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, this is not a human concept. Uh, this is not something, again, that you will learn at the university. This is a dynamic of a living faith which happens for the good in someone's life only because they love God and are called according to his purpose. When a person believes and prays in relationship with God and studies the Bible, they soon learn that their faith is supernatural and is not of the sphere of the present culture. They realize their faith will take them to places they would never otherwise go because they are living in the realm of the kingdom of God. I believe it could be said that believers develop depths of compassion and empathy for others much more than most people. And because of more empathy, they grow deeper in love and care for everyone in their lives. They go deeper into prayer, leaning and relying on their Heavenly Father and looking to God for His strength and guidance and direction for every aspect of their lives. Believers realize who their real protector in life is. That's not a bad thing to know in the era we're having right now of a pandemic. They know that God will put a hedge of protection about them as they truly trust in Him. They also are different in the way they look at other people. When they look at other people they meet, they see that person's value as a child of God or as a future prospective child of God. And Christians go into deeper spiritual understanding which makes the knowledge of the world seem so shallow. After all, if God is not in our process of understanding, we only see a small part of the picture of the 
otherwise abundant life that God offers us. And Christians look for ways to serve others, to help, because we as Christians are to love all peoples. So many charities throughout the world were started by Christians. So today let's look at Romans 8.28 and the godly precepts that it teaches us. It says again, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So first the verse starts out with, and we know. And we know. Do you know God? Is Jesus your savior and your master in Lord? Is your Christian life your very first priority in life? Because unless you believe, you cannot know for certain what we are t talking about. And unless you believe and know the word of God, you cannot have the spiritual discernment to know how God is willing to work in your life. So to know God is a condition precedent to all God is teaching us through this verse. Like everything else, we always have to start in the beginning. And the beginning of faith is to study and to come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We are to come to love Christ and God our Father and have a deep, serious reverence for God in our lives. So the promise of all things working for the good in your life, working together for the good in your life, is conditional. It is not for everyone. We read that we need to know God and know that in Him all things will work together for the good in our lives. And that means that if we do not know that we love God, and if we do not know that we are called according to His purposes, all things will not work out for the good in our lives. Unbelief with no love and no calling to God's purposes is the exact opposite of living in the love and the will of God. I am always amazed how people will question the validity of God or that he is the one true God and still claim all the promises that are made only to believers, such as going to heaven. You see, it is when we truly believe in God through his son Jesus Christ that we are justified before God. We talked about that earlier in another sermon. Uh, coming to faith is being justified. It is then that you receive the Holy Spirit. It is then that the Holy Spirit gives you the spiritual discernment to reveal to you the knowledge and fulfillment of God's kingdom in your life. So when our scripture starts off this morning by saying, and we know, it also means that we have the confidence that we do know. We have confidence that we know the answers to life's issues through the guidance of God. To know means that we have confidence in God's love and caring and that our confidence is justified. We are in relationship with God. We can trust God our Father. Secondly, our verse this morning, I will read it a little further. It says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good. So we know that God causes all things to work together for good. Now think about that. That does not mean that if you live a happy, well-rounded life and go to church, that then all things will work together for our good. No. We are to know and trust that it is God who causes all things to work for our good. In other words, this is not us working. It is God working in our lives. That is a dynamic of faith. One of our late dear brothers in Christ, Jerry Owens, handed out some bumper stickers to a, to a Bible study we were leading in our church. The Bible sticker said, when we work, we work. 
when we pray, God works. Let me say that again. When we work, we work. When we pray, God works. Do you see the difference? When we commit our lives and life issues to God and pray in relationship to our Father in humility, God is going to answer prayer. You are harnessing the power of God to address your life issues and your life outcomes. It is God who is working on your life to improve your life. It is God who is addressing the issues of your life in order to bless you. So here we are taught that is, it is God who causes, God causes all things to work together for the good in the life of the believer. Third, God causes all things to work together for good. And that is in spite of what we want. <laughs> we may not want what God wants for us. How do we see that all things are working together for our good? I'm sure that many times it does not seem so. A job is lost, a relationship broken. Perhaps we do not achieve the professional goal that we wanted to achieve. So what does it mean for all things to work together for our good? That means that every person has many turning points in their life. Every person has problems that need to be solved one way or the other. Have you ever thought about looking back in your life and asking yourself, what if I had not done this when I was 20 years old or 25 years old or 30 years old? I would be in a totally different location in a different place. I wouldn't be in the same relationships. Choices are made in life and we need God to be part of those choices. Sometimes, sometimes things will turn out just fine, but at other times we will experience setbacks, we will set, experience disappointments. Our dreams may not be fulfilled, but here God is telling us through this scripture that all things, good and bad, work for our good. You see, you are going to have victory in Christ. You have, set your, you have your set of goals for your life, but God wants to develop you in your weaknesses into the will of God. God has a plan for happiness and peace in your life. God has a plan for your life. You know, you may agree or you may not agree, but <clears throat> I believe that um, sometimes we humans choose the wrong goals in life. Perhaps we want to be famous, but God knows that that might cause us to become self-righteous, self-absorbed, uh, with a poor attitude which would cut us off from the people he wants us to be in relationship with. So God has a plan for your life that is more wonderful than you could ever develop yourself. That is the one thing that is so exciting about living the Christian life. You are going to soar. Some say that when one door closes, another door opens. You've probably experienced that in your life. You lose a job and you're dev devastated, but soon another job opens, which provides you with more uh, purposeful living which provides which you enjoy even more so God is making a way for your ultimate purpose and your ultimate happiness and God is in the business of opening the right door for your life but only when you trust in him the hymn says God will make a way where there is no way that is a dynamic of a living faith You know, in Romans 20, uh, eight, chapter 8 again, but in verses 26 and 27, the Apostle Paul addresses how God helps our weaknesses. Here is what he wrote. Now in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. 
he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit what the mind of the spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God you know so much of living the Christian life is wanting to know the will of God in any situation when you pick the path of your loving God through recognizing the will of God you cannot go wrong you are on the right path you are then living in God's will here Paul points out that often we do not even know what to pray for but the Holy Spirit himself intercedes on our behalf according to the will of God so when God causes all things to work for the good in your life it may not be what your first priority was it may actually be disruptive to your life perhaps you were laid off from a job or do not have the job you want but God has your best in mind God is going to open another door and like a good parent God our Father is going to groom you in his will for you to become the finest person in Christ that you can be and remember the end good result may take time the working for the good may look different from what you anticipated but you will be at peace in the beauty of God's love that's God's gift to us James 1 verse 17 says every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. You can put your full trust in God because there is no variation or shifting shadow. God is not one way one day and another way the next day. God will not change. God will always see you through for your benefit. You know, perhaps God is going to give you another job so that you can be a better spouse or parent. Perhaps God is going to humble you so you can have empathy with others. Perhaps you will go through an illness so you can feel and know your total dependence on God and later be a witness of God's goodness to those who are going through the same thing. You may want a mansion and a limousine, but God may want you to be an instrument of his love and caring and an instrument of carrying his biblical message to the people and family members who need God and he wants to do that through you that may be a higher purpose though more humble <clears throat> well we're going to read the last portion of this verse two and the answer is a question who is God going to bless with in this incredible way is it going to be you remember our verse says in Romans 8 28 and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. So a relationship with God requires something of us. And anything worthwhile requires something of us. God makes all things work for the good. All things work together for the good to A, those who love God and B, those who are called according to his purpose. Now let me ask a series of questions. How do you treat God? How important is God in your life? How thankful are you to God for all of his blessings on your life? How thankful are you to God for your salvation and the eternal hope God gives you through his son Jesus Christ? If you love someone, you talk about them. Here's another question. Do you talk to others about God in your life? Another question. Do you recognize the wonderful blessings God has given you, even in the time of hardship? And even if you face death from illness or otherwise, are you thankful to God for his love and eternal hope he is giving his believers providing them with eternal life and providing you with eternal life back in Romans chapter 8 in verse 9 we read however you are not in the flesh 
but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. So this is an exclusive club in many ways. We must be believers to receive the blessings of God. And being in the Spirit but not in the flesh is certainly not what the world is teaching. Uh, it is of God. And that's why our topics in this series about the dynamics of a living faith uh, are so different from what the world knows. And can you answer this question? Are you called according to his purpose? God has a calling on each of our lives. It is not just for pastors. It is for each one of us to share our faith and serve others in love and in the name of Jesus Christ. As a member of his church, which is the body of Christ, we are to be members of the church just as a body has members. So that we are his instruments and we declare our belief to others and we can serve our God in the way that he calls us. So pray about how God wants to use you to give his love to others in his name. You know, after Romans 8, 28, <clears throat> verses 29 and 30 tells us about how God predestined you and me to be transformed into his Im the image of his Son. Now, remember, we are justified before God when we believe. Then we are sanctified as we learn more and become more like Christ. When you believe in God, you are his. God made you, God planned your life, and he did so because you could, so you could be in a relationship of love with him and so that you could spend an eternity with him. <clears throat> so when God called you, he predestined you so that you could be glorified with him in heaven. Another scripture says, <clears throat> for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And these whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. You see, your life is just not about the daily busyness of work and coping with life's struggles or even life's pleasures. You are part of God's great plan to strengthen you purify you and have you with him forever so that you can know God's love for you and the world will try to upset that plan but what should we say to all these marvelous things Paul answers that in Romans chapter 8 in verses 31 through 36 and tells us no one can separate us from the love of Christ listen to these words what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for all, us all, how will he also not, also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring charges against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. And who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, but rather was raised. At the, is at the right hand of God who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or trouble or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Just as, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day, but we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things we are overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, what a blessing it is to know that no tragedy that life can throw at us can separate us from the love of God. And that in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. 
That is further proof that all things work together for the good. In the Old Testament, Jeremiah told us the wonderful plans that God has for the lives of his people. He said, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for prosperity and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. What an amazing God we have. What an amazing God we serve. Search for him with all of your heart. Make your God your first priority right now if you haven't done so before. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, it seems miraculous that when we become believers that we could actually find ourselves in a situation going through the troubles of life where God is causing all things, good and bad, to work together for our good. Father, that's another example of your love for us. So I thank you for that. And we pray that this week you'll be with people who are watching today, that they will reaffirm that the relationship with God the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ, is our first priority in life, so that all things can work together for the good, for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Amen. Mm -hmm.